UTF-8 is a variable width character encoding capable of encoding all 1,112,064 valid code points in Unicode using 1 to 4 8-bit bytes. The encoding is defined by the Unicode standard, and was originally designed by Ken Thompson and Rob Pike. The name is derived from Unicode or Universal Coded Character Set transformation format 8-bit, it was designed for backward compatibility with ASCII. Code points with lower numerical values, which tend to occur more frequently, are encoded using fewer bytes. The first 128 characters of Unicode, which correspond one-to-one -one with ASCII, are encoded using a single octet with the same binary value as ASCII, so that valid ASCII text is valid UTF-8 encoded Unicode as well. Since ASCII bytes do not occur when encoding non-ASCII code points into UTF-8, UTF-8 is safe to use within most programming and document languages that interpret certain ASCII characters in a special way, such as quote slash quote in file names, quote backslash quote in escape sequences, and percent in print. UTF-8 is the mandatory Unicode character encoding for the World Wide Web, has been the dominant encoding of any kind since 2009, and as of October 2018 accounts for 92.6% of all web pages some of which are simply ASCII, as it's a subset of UTF-8 and 95.1% of the top 1,000 highest ranked web pages. The next most popular multi-byte encodings, Shift-Gs and GB2312, have 0.4% and 0.4% respectively. The Internet Mail Consortium IMC recommended that all email programs be able to display and create mail using UTF-8, and the W3C recommends UTF-8 as the default encoding in XML and HTML. Topic. Description Since the restriction of the Unicode code space to 21-bit values in 2003, UTF-8 is defined to encode code points in 1 to 4 bytes, depending on the number of significant bits in the numerical value of the code point. The following table shows the structure of the encoding. The X characters are replaced by the bits of the code point. If the number of significant bits is no more than 7, the first line applies, if no more than 11 bits, the second line applies, and so on. The first 128 characters US ASCII need 1 byte. The next 1920 characters need 2 bytes to encode, which covers the remainder of almost all Latin script alphabets, and also Greek, Cyrillic, Coptic, Armenian, Hebrew, Arabic, Syriac, Thana and Inco alphabets, as well as combining diacritical marks. Three bytes are needed for characters in the rest of the basic multilingual plane, which contains virtually all characters in common use including most Chinese, Japanese and Korean characters. Four bytes are needed for characters in the other planes of Unicode, which include less common CJK characters, various historic scripts, mathematical symbols, and emoji pictographic symbols. Some of the important features of this encoding are as follows. Backward compatibility, backwards compatibility with ASCII and the enormous amount of software designed to process ASCII encoded text was the main driving force behind the design of UTF-8. In UTF-8, single bytes with values in the range of 0 to 127 map directly to Unicode code points in the ASCII range. Single bytes in this range represent characters, as they do in ASCII. Moreover, 7-bit bytes bytes where the most significant bit is zero never appear in a multi-byte sequence, and no valid multi-byte sequence decodes to an ASCII code point. A sequence of 7-bit bytes is both valid ASCII and valid UTF-8, and under either interpretation represents the same sequence of characters. Therefore, the 7-bit bytes in a UTF-8 stream represent all and only the ASCII characters in the stream. Thus, many text processors, parsers, protocols, file formats, text display programs etc. which use ASCII characters for formatting and control purposes will continue to work as intended by treating the UTF-8 byte stream as a sequence of single byte characters, without decoding the multi-byte sequences. ASCII characters on which the processing turns, such as punctuation, white space, and control characters will never be encoded as multi-byte sequences. It is therefore safe for such processors to simply ignore or pass through the multi-byte sequences, without decoding them. 
For example, ASCII whitespace may be used to tokenize a UTF-8 stream into words, ASCII line feeds may be used to split a UTF-8 stream into lines, and ASCII NUL characters can be used to split UTF-8 encoded data into null terminated strings. Similarly, many format strings used by library functions like print will correctly handle UTF-8 encoded input arguments. Fallback and auto detection, UTF-8 provided backwards compatibility for 7-bit ASCII, but much software and data uses 8-bit extended ASCII encodings designed prior to the adoption of Unicode to represent the character sets of European languages. Part of the popularity of UTF-8 is due to the fact that it provides a form of backward compatibility for these as well. A UTF-8 processor which erroneously receives an extended ASCII file as input can fall back or replace 8-bit bytes using the appropriate code point in the Unicode Latin 1 supplement block, when the 8-bit byte appears outside a valid multi-byte sequence. The bytes in extended ASCII encodings of real-world text are typically not legal UTF-8 multi-byte sequences. This is because the bytes which introduce multi-byte sequences in UTF-8 are primarily accented letters mostly vowels in the common extended ASCII encodings, and the UTF-8 continuation bytes are punctuation and symbol characters. To appear as a valid UTF-8 multi-byte sequence, a series of 2 to 4 extended ASCII 8-bit characters would have to be an unusual combination of symbols and accented letters such as an accented vowel followed immediately by certain punctuation. In short, real-world extended ASCII character sequences which look like valid UTF-8 multi-byte sequences are unlikely. Fallback errors will be false negatives, and these will be rare. Moreover, in many applications, such as text display, the consequence of incorrect fallback is usually slight. Only legibility is affected, and only for a few characters. These two things make fallback feasible, if somewhat imperfect. Indeed, as discussed further below, the HTML5 standard requires that erroneous bytes in supposed UTF-8 data be replaced upon display on the assumption that they are Windows 1252 characters. The presence of invalid 8-bit characters outside valid multi-byte sequences can also be used to auto-detect that an encoding is actually an extended ASCII encoding rather than UTF-8, and decode it accordingly. A UTF-8 stream may simply contain errors, resulting in the auto-detection scheme producing false positives, but auto-detection is successful in the majority of cases, especially with longer texts, and is widely used. Prefix code, the first byte indicates the number of bytes in the sequence. Reading from a stream can instantaneously decode each individual fully received sequence, without first having to wait for either the first byte of a next sequence or an end of stream indication. The length of multi-byte sequences is easily determined by humans as it is simply the number of high-order ones in the leading byte. An incorrect character will not be decoded if a stream ends mid-sequence. Self-synchronization, the leading bytes and the continuation bytes do not share values continuation bytes start with 10 while single bytes start with 0 and longer lead bytes start with 11. This means a search will not accidentally find the sequence for one character starting in the middle of another character. It also means the start of a character can be found from a random position by backing up at most three bytes to find the leading byte. An incorrect character will not be decoded if a stream starts mid-sequence, and a shorter sequence will never appear inside a longer one. Sorting order, the chosen values of the leading bytes and the fact that the continuation bytes have the high order bits first means that a list of UTF-8 strings can be sorted in code point order by sorting the corresponding byte sequences. Topic. Examples Consider the encoding of the euro sign, euro. The Unicode code point for euro is U plus 2 OAC. According to the scheme table above, this will take three bytes to encode, since it is between U plus 0800 and U plus FFFF. Hexadecimal 20AC is binary 0010-0000-1010-1100. The two leading zeros are added because, as the scheme table shows, a three-byte encoding needs exactly 16 bits from the code point. Because the encoding will be 3 bytes long, its leading byte starts with 3 ones, then a 0 11 10. The four most significant bits of the code point are stored in the remaining low order 4 bits of this byte 1110 leaving 12 bits of the code point yet to be encoded. 
All continuation bytes contain exactly 6 bits from the code point. So the next 6 bits of the code point are stored in the low order 6 bits of the next byte, and 10 is stored in the high order 2 bits to mark it as a continuation byte so 1000 Finally the last 6 bits of the code point are stored in the low order 6 bits of the final byte, and again 10 is stored in the high order 2 bits 1010-1100, the 3 bytes 1110-0010-1000-0010-1010-1100 can be more concisely written in hexadecimal, as E282AC. The following table summarizes this conversion, as well as others with different lengths in UTF-8. The colors indicate how bits from the code point are distributed among the UTF-8 bytes. Additional bits added by the UTF-8 encoding process are shown in black. Since UTF-8 uses groups of 6 bits, it is sometimes useful to use octal notation which uses 3-bit groups. With a calculator which can convert between hexadecimal and octal it can be easier to manually create or interpret UTF-8 compared with using binary. Octal 0 to 177 hex 0 to 7f is coded with an unchanged single byte. Octal 0 200 3777 hex 80 to 7ff shall be coded with two bytes. XXYY will be 3XX2YY. Octal 4000-177777-hex-800-fffff shall be coded with three bytes, XXYYZZ will be 340 plus XX2YY2ZZ. Octal 20000-417777-hex-10000-10 FFFF shall be coded with four bytes, WXXYYZZ will be 36W2XX2YY2ZZ. When converting UTF-8 into code points, the following rules apply. Octal 302-337 is the first of two bytes. 3XX2YY will be XXYY in octal. Octal 340-357 is the first of three bytes. 3XX2YY2ZZ will be XX40YYZZ. Octal 360-364 is the first of four bytes. 36W2XX2YY2ZZ will be WXXYYZZ. Octal 200-277 are continuation bytes, and others beginning with three are invalid. Topic. Code page layout The following table summarizes usage of UTF-8 code units individual bytes or octets in a code page format. The upper half 0 underscore to 7 underscore is for bytes used only in single byte codes, so it looks like a normal code page. The lower half is for continuation bytes 8 underscore to B underscore and leading bytes C underscore to F underscore, and is explained further in the legend below. Orange cells with a large dot are continuation bytes. The hexadecimal number shown after a plus plus sign is the value of the six bits they add. White cells are the leading bytes for a sequence of multiple bytes, the length shown at the left edge of the row. The text shows the Unicode blocks encoded by sequences starting with this byte, and the hexadecimal code point shown in the cell is the lowest character value encoded using that leading byte. Red cells must never appear in a valid UTF-8 sequence. The first two red cells CO and C1, could be used only for a 2-byte encoding of a 7-bit ASCII character which should be encoded in 1-byte, as described below such overlong sequences are disallowed. The red cells in the F row F5 to FD indicate leading bytes of 4-byte or longer sequences that cannot be valid because they would encode code points larger than the U plus 10 FFFF limit of Unicode a limit derived from the maximum code point encodable in UTF-16, and FE and FF were never defined for any purpose in UTF-8. Pink cells are the leading bytes for a sequence of multiple bytes, of which some, but not all, possible continuation sequences are valid. E0 and F0 could start overlong encodings, in this case the lowest non-overlong encoded code point is shown. F4 can start code points greater than U plus 10 FFFF which are invalid. ED can start the encoding of a code point in the range U plus D800 U plus DFFF, these are invalid since they are reserved for UTF-16 surrogate halves. Topic. Overlong encodings. 
In principle, it would be possible to inflate the number of bytes in an encoding by padding the code point with leading zeros. To encode the euro sign euro from the above example in 4 bytes instead of 3, it could be padded with leading zeros until it was 21 bits long 000000100000100100100110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110110
Sometimes it is called UTF-8B. If the UTF-8 encoding of these points is defined as invalid so they convert to three errors, this would seem to make conversion lossless so the errors can actually be recovered when encoding back to UTF-8. But this runs into a practical difficulty in that the encoder must make sure the sequence of errors it is encoding do not actually turn into valid UTF-8. In addition making any surrogate halves invalid means you cannot encode invalid UTF-16. The Unicode code points U plus 0080 U plus 00 FF with the same value as the byte, thus interpreting the bytes according to ISO 88591 one care must be taken so that the C1 control codes such as NEL hexadecimal 0085 do not cause further code to misbehave. The Unicode code point for the character represented by the byte in CP1252, which is similar to using ISO 8 88591, except that some characters in the range hexadecimal 80 hexadecimal 9f are mapped into different Unicode code points. For example, hexadecimal 80 becomes the euro sign, U plus 20 AC. This makes text where legacy encodings are mixed with UTF-8 readable, and thus it is commonly done in browsers. The large number of invalid byte sequences provides the advantage of making it easy to have a program accept both UTF-8 and legacy encodings such as ISO 88591. Software can check for UTF-8 correctness, and if that fails assume the input to be in the legacy encoding. It is technically true that this may detect an ISO 88591 string as UTF-8, but this is very unlikely if it contains any 8-bit bytes as they all have to be in unusual patterns of two or more in a row, such as a circumflex pound. Topic. Invalid code points Since RFC 3629 November 2003, the high and low surrogate halves used by UTF-16 U plus D800 through U plus DFFF and code points not encodable by UTF-16 those after U plus 10 FFFF are not legal Unicode values, and their UTF-8 encoding must be treated as an invalid byte sequence. Not decoding unpaired surrogate halves makes it impossible to store invalid UTF-16 such as Windows file names or UTF-16 that has been split between the surrogates as UTF-8. To preserve these invalid UTF-16 sequences, their corresponding UTF-8 encodings are sometimes allowed by implementations despite the above rule. There are attempts to define this behavior formally see WTF-8 and CESU below. Topic. Official name and variants The official Internet Assigned Numbers Authority code for the encoding is UTF-8. All letters are uppercase, and the name is hyphenated. This spelling is used in all the Unicode Consortium documents relating to the encoding. Alternatively, the name UTF-8 may be used by all standards conforming to the YANA list which include CSS, HTML, XML, and HTTP headers, as the declaration is case insensitive. Other descriptions, such as those that omit the hyphen or replace it with a space, i.e., UTF-8, or UTF-8, are not accepted as correct by the governing standards. Despite this, most agents such as browsers can understand them, and so standards intended to describe existing practice such as HTML5 may effectively require their recognition, and officially, UTF-8BOM and UTF-8NOBOM are sometimes used to refer to text files which respectively contain and lack a byte order mark BOM. In Japan especially, UTF-8 encoding without BOM is sometimes called UTF-8N. Supported Windows versions, i.e. Windows 7 and later, have code page 65001, as a synonym for UTF-8 with better support than in older Windows, and Microsoft has a script for Windows 10, to enable it by default for its notepad program. In PCL, UTF-8 is called symbol ID. 18N. PCL supports 183 character encodings, called symbol sets, which potentially could be reduced to 1, 18N, that is UTF-8. Topic. Derivatives The following implementations show slight differences from the UTF-8 specification. They are incompatible with the UTF-8 specification and may be rejected by conforming UTF-8 applications. CESU-8 
Many programs added UTF-8 conversions for UCS-2 data and did not alter this UTF-8 conversion when UCS-2 was replaced with the surrogate pair using UTF-16. In such programs each half of a UTF-16 surrogate pair is encoded as its own 3-byte UTF-8 encoding, resulting in 6-byte sequences rather than 4 bytes for characters outside the basic multilingual plane. Oracle and MySQL databases use this, as well as Java and TCL as described below, and probably many Windows programs where the programmers were unaware of the complexities of UTF-16. Although this non-optimal encoding is generally not deliberate, a supposed benefit is that it preserves UTF-16 binary sorting order when CESU-8 is binary sorted. Topic. Modified UTF-8 In modified UTF-8 MUTF-8, the null character U uses the 2-byte overlong encoding 1100000000000 hexadecimal C080 instead of 0000000 hexadecimal 00. Modified UTF-8 strings never contain any actual null bytes but can contain all Unicode code points including U plus 0000, which allows such strings with a null byte appended to be processed by traditional null terminated string functions. All known modified UTF-8 implementations also treat the surrogate pairs as in CESU-8. In normal usage, the Java programming language supports standard UTF-8 when reading and writing strings through input streamreader and output streamwriter if it is the platform's default character set or is requested by the program. However it uses modified UTF-8 for object serialization among other applications of data input and data output, for the Java native interface, and for embedding constant strings in class files. The DEX format defined by Dalvik also uses the same modified UTF-8 to represent string values, TCL also uses the same modified UTF-8 as Java for internal representation of Unicode data, but uses strict CESU-8 for external data. <laughs> WTF-8 WTF-8 Wobbly Transformation Format 8-bit is an extension of UTF-8 where the encodings of unpaired surrogate halves U plus D800 through U plus DFFF are allowed. This is necessary to store possibly invalid UTF-16, such as Windows filenames. Many systems that deal with UTF-8 work this way without considering it a different encoding, as it is simpler. WTF-8 has been used to refer to erroneously doubly encoded UTF-8. Topic. Byte order mark Many Windows programs including Windows Notepad add the bytes hexadecimal EF, hexadecimal BB, hexadecimal BF at the start of any document saved as UTF-8. This is the UTF-8 encoding of the Unicode byte order mark bomb, and is commonly referred to as a UTF-8 bomb, even though it is not relevant to byte order. A bomb can also appear if another encoding with a bomb is translated to UTF-8 without stripping it. Software that is not aware of multi-byte encodings will display the bomb as three garbage characters at the start of the document, e.g. I. In software interpreting the document as ISO 8859-1 or Windows 1252 or if interpreted as code page 437, a default for certain older Windows console applications. The Unicode standard neither requires nor recommends the use of the bomb for UTF-8, but warns that it may be encountered at the start of a file as a transcoding artifact. The presence of the UTF-8 bomb may cause problems with existing software that can handle UTF-8, for example, Programming language parsers not explicitly designed for UTF-8 can often handle UTF-8 in string constants and comments, but will choke on encountering an UTF-8 bomb at the start of the file. Programs that identify file types by leading characters may fail to identify the file if a UTF-8 bomb is present even if the user of the file could skip the bomb. An example is the Unix shebang syntax. Another example is Internet Explorer which will render pages in standards mode only when it starts with a document type declaration. Programs that insert information at the start of a file will break use of the bomb to identify UTF-8 one example is offline browsers that add the originating URL to the start of the file. History 
By early 1992, the search was on for a good byte stream encoding of multi-byte character sets. The draft ISO 10646 standard contained a non-required annex called UTF-1 that provided a byte stream encoding of its 32-bit code points. This encoding was not satisfactory on performance grounds, among other problems, and the biggest problem was probably that it did not have a clear separation between ASCII and non-ASCII. New UTF-1 tools would be backward compatible with ASCII encoded text, but UTF-1 encoded text could confuse existing code expecting ASCII or extended ASCII because it could contain continuation bytes in the range hexadecimal 21 hexadecimal 7e that meant something else in ASCII, e.g., hexadecimal 2f4, the Unix pattern directory separator, and this example is reflected in the name and introductory text of its replacement. The table below was derived from a textual description in the annex. In July 1992, the X, Open Committee Zojig was looking for a better encoding. Dave Prosser of Unix System Laboratories submitted a proposal for one that had faster implementation characteristics and introduced the improvement that 7-bit ASCII characters would only represent themselves, all multi-byte sequences would include only bytes where the high bit was set. The name file system Safe UCS Transformation Format FSSUTF and most of the text of this proposal were later preserved in the final specification. In August 1992, this proposal was circulated by an IBM X, open representative to interested parties. A modification by Ken Thompson of the Plan 9 Operating System Group at Bell Labs made it somewhat less bit efficient than the previous proposal but crucially allowed it to be self-synchronizing, letting a reader start anywhere and immediately detect byte sequence boundaries. It also abandoned the use of biases and instead added the rule that only the shortest possible encoding is allowed. The additional loss in compactness is relatively insignificant, but readers now have to look out for invalid encodings to avoid reliability and especially security issues. Thompson's design was outlined on September 2, 1992, on a placemat in a New Jersey diner with Rob Pike. In the following days, Pike and Thompson implemented it and updated Plan 9 to use it throughout, and then communicated their success back to X, Open, which accepted it as the specification for FSS UTF. UTF-8 was first officially presented at the US ENIX conference in San Diego, from January 25 to 29, 1993. In November 2003, UTF-8 was restricted by RFC 3629 to match the constraints of the UTF-16 character encoding, explicitly prohibiting code points corresponding to the high and low surrogate characters removed more than 3% of the 3-byte sequences, and ending at U plus 10 FFFF removed more than 48% of the 4-byte sequences and all 5- and 6-byte sequences. Google reported that in 2008, UTF-8 labeled Unicode became the most common encoding for HTML files. International Components for Unicode has historically used UTF-16 and still does only for Java, while for C, C++ UTF-8 is now supported as the default charset, including the correct handling of illegal UTF-8. Topic: <laughs> Comparison with single byte encodings. UTF-8 can encode any Unicode character, avoiding the need to figure out and set a code page, or otherwise indicate what character set is in use, and allowing output in multiple scripts at the same time. For many scripts there have been more than one single byte encoding in usage, so even knowing the script was insufficient information to display it correctly. The bytes hexadecimal FE and hexadecimal FF do not appear, so a valid UTF-8 stream never matches the UTF-16 byte order mark and thus cannot be confused with it. The absence of hexadecimal FF also eliminates the need to escape this byte in Telnet and FTP control connection. UTF-8 encoded text is larger than specialized single byte encodings except for plain ASCII characters. In the case of scripts which used 8-bit character sets with non-Latin characters encoded in the upper half such as most Cyrillic and Greek alphabet code pages, characters in UTF-8 will be double the size. For some scripts, such as Thai and Devanagari which is used by various South Asian languages, characters will triple in size. There are even examples where a single byte turns into a composite character in Unicode and is thus six times larger in UTF-8. This has caused objections in India and other countries. 
It is possible in UTF-8 or any other multibyte encoding to split or truncate a string in the middle of a character. This can result in an invalid string which some software refuses to accept. A good parser should ignore a truncated character at the end, which is easy in UTF-8 but tricky in some other multi-byte encodings. If the code points are all the same size, measurements of a fixed number of them is easy. Due to ASCII-era documentation where character is used as a synonym for byte, this is often considered important. However, by measuring string positions using bytes instead of characters, most algorithms can be easily and efficiently adapted for UTF-8. Searching for a string within a long string can for example be done byte by byte. The self-synchronization property prevents false positives. Some software, such as text editors, will refuse to correctly display or interpret UTF-8 unless the text starts with a byte order mark, and will insert such a mark. This has the effect of making it impossible to use UTF-8 with any older software that can handle ASCII-like encodings but cannot handle the byte order mark. This, however, is no problem of UTF-8 itself but one of software implementations. Topic. Comparison with other multi-byte encodings UTF-8 can encode any Unicode character. Files in different scripts can be displayed correctly without having to choose the correct code page or font. For instance Chinese and Arabic can be supported in the same text without special codes inserted or manual settings to switch the encoding. UTF-8 is self-synchronizing, character boundaries are easily identified by scanning for well-defined bit patterns in either direction. If bytes are lost due to error or corruption, one can always locate the next valid character and resume processing. If there is a need to shorten a string to fit a specified field, the previous valid character can easily be found. Many multi-byte encodings are much harder to resynchronize. Any byte-oriented string searching algorithm can be used with UTF-8 data, since the sequence of bytes for a character cannot occur anywhere else. Some older variable length encodings such as shift -Gs, did not have this property and thus made string matching algorithms rather complicated. In shift G's the end byte of a character and the first byte of the next character could look like another legal character, something that can't happen in UTF-8. Efficient to encode using simple bit operations. UTF-8 does not require slower mathematical operations such as multiplication or division unlike shift G's, GB2312 and other encodings. UTF-8 will take more space than a multi-byte encoding designed for a specific script. East Asian legacy encodings generally used 2 bytes per character yet take 3 bytes per character in UTF-8. Topic. Comparison with UTF-16 Byte encodings and UTF-8 are represented by byte arrays in programs, and often nothing needs to be done to a function when converting from a byte encoding to UTF-8. UTF-16 is represented by 16-bit word arrays, and converting to UTF-16 while maintaining compatibility with existing ASCII-based programs such as was done with Windows requires every API and data structure that takes a string to be duplicated, one version accepting byte strings and another version accepting UTF-16. Text encoded in UTF-8 will be smaller than the same text encoded in UTF-16 if there are more code points below U plus 0080 than in the range U plus 0800, U plus FFFF. This is true for all modern European languages. Text in for example, Chinese, Japanese or Devanagari will take more space in UTF-8 if there are more of these characters than there are ASCII characters. This is likely when data mainly consist of pure prose, but is lessened by the degree to which the context uses ASCII whitespace, digits, and punctuation. Most of the rich text formats including HTML contain a large proportion of ASCII characters for the sake of formatting, thus the size usually will be reduced significantly compared with UTF-16, even when the language mostly uses 3-byte long characters in UTF-8. Most communication e HTML and, IP, and storage e for Unix, was designed for a stream of bytes. A UTF-16 string must use a pair of bytes for each code unit. The order of those two bytes becomes an issue and must be specified in the UTF-16 protocol, such as with a byte order mark. If an odd number of bytes is missing from UTF-16, the whole rest of the string will be meaningless text. 
Any bytes missing from UTF-8 will still allow the text to be recovered accurately starting with the next character after the missing bytes. Topic. See also Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. External links There are several current definitions of UTF-8 in various standards documents RFC 3629, STD 63 which establishes UTF-8 as a standard Internet Protocol element The Unicode Standard, version 11.0, section 3.9 D92, section 3.10 D95 ISO, IEC 10646-2014 Section 9.1 They supersede the definitions given in the following obsolete works ISO, IEC 10646-1-1993 Amendment 2, Annex R The Unicode Standard, Version 6.0, Section 3.9 D92, Section 3.10 D95 the Unicode Standard, Version 5.0, Section 3.9 Section 3.10 The Unicode Standard, Version 2.0, Appendix A RFC 2044 RFC 2279 the Unicode Standard, Version 3.0, Section 2.3 plus Corrigendum No. 1, UTF-8 Shortest Form 2000. Unicode Standard Annex No. 27, Unicode 3.1 They are all the same in their general mechanics, with the main differences being on issues such as allowed range of code point values and safe handling of invalid input. Original UTF-8 Paper or PDF for Plan 9 from Bell Labs RFC 5198 defines UTF-8 NFC for network interchange UTF-8 test pages by Andreas Prylop, Joost Gippert and the World Wide Web Consortium Unix, Linux, UTF-8, Unicode FAQ, Linux Unicode How To, UTF-8 and Gentoo Characters, Symbols and the Unicode Miracle, Computerfile on YouTube